Oh, bubble bobble. Let's play some bubs. Bubsy bobble. I love the no, sound. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's no good for anybody. What could possibly I'm glad go you wrong? Like the soundtrack because uh, you're about to hear a lot of it. Oh, a non-stop barrage of it. Oh, look, there's our dick mushroom. This game also reminded me a lot of um, a game I used to love called Kickle Cubicle. Where the oh kinda, man, that takes me back. Yeah, the enemies kind of look the same, and uh... That, that's actually a pretty good puzzle, like, platformer too. That was one I was actually thinking of speedrunning for a while. The problem is, at the end of each stage, um, you have to, uh... Like, the stage explodes. And the animation for the stage exploding is like... 20 seconds a stage. Like, to the point where, if, you're, <laughs> if you do a full run of it, um, a full run of that game would take uh, an hour and change, and literally someone timed out like 15 minutes of that is purely spent uh, waiting for... Watching cutscene. Yeah. I could never wrap my head around the jumping physics for this game. Those are some angry bubbles. Like, I really like this game until... There's that one certain stage where you have to get a bunch of bubbles and then jump up to all the enemies up top. And I could never do it. Or the uh, two-player mode, where getting the true ending is, like, literally impossible. Yeah, that's the other thing that I remember about this game, where it was impossible. Well, not impossible, but you'd beat the game, and then it would be like, oh, you need to beat the game, but also get all the secret items. So then you do that, and Experience then it says, power well, this still... Yeah, this still isn't the true ending, because you didn't play it with a friend. Experience the power of friendship. Also, double KO. These robots are kind of making a monkey out of you, Tom. I've never actually died at, like, the same time the level got beaten, so it's like, hey, here's the next level, but you already died. But your password's boof boof. Boof boof. Biff boy. Buff boy. I think in honor of the new thread, um, which by the way, I know some of you have already seen it, uh, but I have started a puzzle game like Mega Thread. When's Panic Bomber? Uh, probably soon enough. <laughs> I know I'm doing Puyo Tetris uh, for it. Guy loves him some Puyo Tetris. That's actually kind of why I wanted to do that tonight, was get recording for that out of the way. <laughs> I listen, I love me some puzzle games. Like... I like puzzle games that you can take your time on. Like games where there's like one solution and you have to find it. Oh, okay, I get what you're saying. I admit I'm not half bad at them, but I'm really not a huge fan of most like pretty fast-paced competitive puzzle games. Like, I can play Poyo, but I don't enjoy it. I have to get. What like... about Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine? That's a completely different story. It's always time for Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. I can stomach the Poyo engine for that. 
I just thought it was really bizarre that they made they made a game and skinned it into a Sonic game, but they didn't use like the the video game Sonic. They used like the cartoon Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog Sonic. <laughs> yes, yeah, it only... was a really bizarre choice. That was around the same time when uh, Sonic Spinball came out, if I remember correctly, which was a uh, it was developed in America, that. I think it was. Uh, uh, yeah, it was. It was. It might have been the same case with um, Mean Beam Machine, where they were just uh, kicking shit at the American studio, and we're like, you know what? Let's just uh, let's use this IP before it dies. Speaking of, there's a kind of a resurgence in Sonic TV with Sonic Boom, which is apparently actually pretty good. I've been watching Sonic Boom, and it is one of the funniest series I've seen in a long time. Like it's it's, it's, it's basically like postmodern Sonic. Sonic, yeah. It's it's completely pomo. I mean, like the characters pretty much know the state of the Sonic industry and what it has been for the past like 15 years, and the writers do not ever let up on it. Hey, they thing, don't. Like, like all the characters, awesome. they have this kind of new attitude where they're kind of like self-aware. Yeah. Like there's I mean, this one that's that's making the rounds right now where apparently Sonic brings home a new video game <laughs> called <laughs> Topatopotamus 2. And they all just make these in-references about, oh, Topatopotamus 2 was the greatest one in the series. Yeah, it never really worked in 3D. And... Sonic says something like, they shouldn't have changed the color of Topatoponymous' arms. <laughs> they love... They, that's the second arm joke that they've made in that series. They love that joke. Like, it's actually a good reboot. I can't believe I'm saying that. For Even like, though the game was, like, dog shit. The game was atrocious. Yeah, the games have all been terrible. I'm like, fuck it. Okay, we're gonna start from nothing and make it good. It's kind of weird what Sonic is now, because Sonic is... I don't really even think of the games anymore when I think of Sonic. I think of, like... The culture around media. it. Yeah, like the media. Like, you've got the one Sonic Twitter account where it's just a guy getting paid to shit post. Yeah, he's got then, a Tumblr, too. Yeah. And then, like, the cartoons and stuff, which are actually pretty good. I don't know what's up with the Archie comics. It's been a really long uh, time since I tuned in. Apparently they've got a whole lot of new staff, and it's a lot different than it was, like, uh, you know, a handful of years ago when Ken Penders was on deck. Well, the Archie comics were just kind of all over the place, I think, well, basically they were pretty, at any point in time. They were pretty consistent in tone for as long as I had been reading them when I was younger. Like, we're talking issue, like, maybe 50, 60-ish... Up until, like... Oh, jeez, when did I stop reading those? Fuck. Uh, maybe, like, the late 2000s? But it was I very, know. I very... I jumped off of that shit pretty early. Yeah, it's Like, the ones it's that really I remember better. reading was, like, with Antoine and, like, the Freedom Fighters and stuff. It was very, very overly dramatic and character-driven. And not in a fun way. In yeah, a, that's like, what I was thinking. who the hell is like, Sonic I... kissing this month kind of way. Yeah, every time I which see any kind of... Which is a question like... everyone's been trying to answer and they need to stop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, any time I ever saw anything on the Damn internet it. about the comics, it was, it was about how, like, overly dramatic everything was. And, I don't know, you, when you've got these, like, woodland creatures with big eyes and sneakers, you can't really get that much genuine drama out of it. Mm -mm. I mean, like, the closest they ever got was the Saddam series, which, after the first season, like, it just got a lot lighter in tone, and it, it generally just... Yeah, I don't know, the tone changed a lot between seasons. I had only ever seen ep uh, episodes from, like, the first season when I was younger, and uh, I tuned into the rest of it uh, back when I was still in college. Very different beast, and they changed a lot of voice actors, too. Tom, I don't think you're going to get your doctorate this way. I, you know what, I keep, like, I keep thinking that it operates on Tetris rules that I can, like, rotate <laughs> pieces at the last second. Because I will tell you, Dr. Mario was not my puzzle game growing up. I was, I was definitely a Tetris <laughs> kid. But no, I could just, I could talk for hours about cartoons in general. 
I mean, yeah, me with, too. With that and like with Sonic Mania coming out and looking a really good. Well, Sonic Mania looks good because Sega had nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really like all the fans are putting like so much good work and good effort into making that game. Like, like seriously, how has nobody caught on to this yet? Just let the fans do the work and then when they make something good just pay them a little bit of money that's all you need to do that's practically what they're doing with this though i mean they started out with just the guy who um ported the first sonic game to apple i believe it was yeah, like the their and, ios the android and ios versions which are apparently like i never even heard of them apparently they are the best ways to experience that game yeah, I mean, what the guy basically did was he rewrote an engine from scratch that perfectly replicated the original physics, and that way they don't need to fuck around with, like, emulator accuracy or anything. Yeah, and he re basically reprogrammed the game from scratch, like... Yep. And basically just used that engine to write Sonic Mania, because that's a really smart idea. <laughs> But then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got Nintendo shutting shit down that people are actually really legitimately interested in. And well, that's because Nintendo's make... policies are so draconian when it comes to their IP. It's been really bad the past few years. Like, I just don't get it. You've got people that are basically willing to make more content for you for peanuts. And instead of capitalizing on that, you just shut it down. Yep. I mean, that's how they've been operating on YouTube as well. I mean, they just oh, monetize the shit out of anybody that wants to do anything Nintendo. To I an mean, absurd don't... degree where, like, you actually have to go through them in order to make a video you can monetize. Yeah. I, and let's talk about that for a second. You've got to go through them, meaning they take, they get money anyway, and then YouTube gets their share of the money, and you're also subject to, like, a Nintendo approval process or whatever. Basically, and it, everybody, yeah, they ba that that policy was basically laughed out of town. The second, you know, unless you're like, I think that policy is more for like big name, actual YouTube partners like your PewDiePie's and your Boogies and all that. No, pretty stuff. much everybody is getting slammed by automatic Nintendo DRMs. Like everybody that makes a Nintendo. Oh stuff. yeah, I know that everybody is, but like the the creator program isn't for like Johnny Schmo. It's not for like uploading. Us. Oh, of course not. Yeah. Because it's not going to make Nintendo any ad money. They can just take yeah, it down for, instead. It's that's easier. That's for people that make YouTube their living. Poor bastards. <laughs> God. You could always take the Sterling method me. of just, like, mashing together a bunch of different IP from different companies and locking it up. Uh -huh. That was the smartest thing he's ever did. That was ingenious. I mean, I know Oh, there's, you know, he can be a little polarizing. You might like him, you might not. I like him. Oh, I, love I think he's got, you know... I don't really watch his first impressions videos because they're not really that good. But yeah, I, I don't. Really... I don't enjoy watching him play any video games at all. But I think he's a very talented writer, and he's got his finger on the pulse of the industry, and tells it in a way that is. It's something that we need to hear more often. Yeah, it's it's funny and it's entertaining. Yeah, he's a like gifted writer. Mm -hmm. So when he makes like the gym position stuff, I like listening to those. But if it's, if it's just him fucking around in a video game, it's really kind of unbearable. Yeah, he's extremely bad at improvising, and video games in general. Mm -hmm. Except for, like, there's a couple where um, there was this one, I guess, free-to-play game, kind of like... I guess it was like a Club Penguin kind of thing. Oh, where no. um, you're supposed to log in and create your... They call it Create Your Zing where it's like this little Care Bear kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't get past... Like, he made it, but he... It goes to a screen where you're supposed to name it, and it wouldn't let him name it. <laughs> and he's just kind of at that screen doing, you know, everything he can to try and name his, name his Zing. <laughs> and he's like, why won't you let me name my Zing? <laughs> it's a good Zing, Brett. What a tragedy. Just, just lamenting the fact that he couldn't name his Zing. I mean, he probably would have just named it Chungus and called it a day. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of his thing. <laughs> and, yeah, he recently got his lawsuit dropped. 
Oh, really? The, whole, the, the whole, uh, the digital whole digital homicide, homicide thing. thing. Yeah. I cannot wait for this week's Jimquisition. Because it's based, you know yeah, it's going to be just... It apparently, it apparently got bizarre. Like, you... at some point, he wanted... It was either 15 million or, like, 150 million. I don't know. It could be either one. You know, like, the next video is going to be him. Like, the Jimquisition is going to have... Like, this week's one is going to have him, like, jerking off on the, uh... Acquittal, like... <laughs> yeah, he's gonna have a field day. No, it wasn't just dismissed. It was uh, dismissed with prejudice. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah which, <laughs> in legal... In I'm not legal surprised, speak, but I'm really glad to hear it. Yeah, in legal speak, if I'm understanding this correctly, uh, dismissed with prejudice basically means that the judge acknowledges that the charges were completely frivolous. And in the future, he can't be sued with those same charges again. Yeah, I mean, it's basically just the, the court's politest equivalent of fuck off. It is it, it is the slam dunk. Of... Yeah. Oh! oh and I've never man, heard that of that been before. Nice that Slick. Been KO. That is nice. Well, it's something you just kidding. straight up don't get to hear very often because cases are usually dropped a lot quicker. Or, you know, yeah. like the terms are so petty that... It, well, it here's, never really here's comes to that. We've been involved in a couple cases at work, you know, accounting stuff where a customer didn't want to pay. Right. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, it becomes like a game where, okay, <laughs> is, is this worth pursuing? If we get the, if we take them to court and we get the money that we're owed, how much in court fees is it going to cost us? Court fees that might not be recuperated. And then there's stuff like, um, it was over, like, the sale of, like, some technical machinery. And yes. basically what it amounted to was, I, I think it was just kind of a bullshit, you know, getting this to go away. But mm -hmm. it was, they would have claimed that something that we told them to do over the phone caused their computers to become inoperable. Uh -huh. and, and that's basically impossible. But you have to take into account that this is going before some judge who might not know that. Right. So you have to take that into account. And then it's all it. And this was in a court in Canada, which was, you know, fees on top of fees to the point where they know that it's going to cost us. We're not making any money to bring this, this case before a court. <sighs> and that's the game that you play. But I think in this situation, where the guy is just operating out of complete spite, uh, it, it never became a factor. So you've got the guy like presenting or representing himself, <clears> and, and then acting asking do. for these absurd claims of like fifteen million dollars or some shit, which is how you get okay. This is this is ridiculous. I'm going to dismiss this case with prejudice. <laughs> I mean, did he actually ever take him to court, or were there, was there just oh, a lot of mudslinging and claimings? Like, this the, this was a lawsuit. Wow. Yeah. Now. Oh, Tom, you were, you were so... Yeah. You were golden. I'm, I'm still not... I'm still not out. If I can pull this off. <laughs> Uh, it won't let me, it won't let me, it, it's smart. Ah, shit, so cool. Basically, what I had happen was my, again, I'm, I don't want to sound like I'm blaming the cat, but she pretty much hopped up and started, like, I fucking my bottle of water. So, for a little bit there. <laughs> uh, so, for about a couple of seconds there, I had to, like, play the game as well as like cap my bottle of water move it throw the cat like it random. sounded like you could either have a cat or play video games tom normally she's not that bad she but something's dangling right now she woke up from her nap like i basically what i try and do is before i stream i really try and tire her out by taking the laser pointer and just having her, like, <laughs> just do laps all around the house. And normally that's enough that she'll sleep for, like, two hours while I'm streaming. A better, you know, 
A better option has always been putting her up in the guest room, but the last time I did that, she had to go, she had to use the litter box, and I don't have a spare litter box up in there. So pretty much when I went up there, uh -oh. she had, she had pooped, and I felt really, really shitty about that, so mm. I kind of, I kind of want to stop doing that. Um, That's fair. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky that... that my cat thinks the window is more exciting than anything I ever do, so... Well, normally, he only comes in here once in a while. When summer comes, I'll be able to do that again. But the problem is it's like 30 degrees outside. So unfortunately, I can't open the window. Normally, she <laughs> loves nothing more than to just sit and look outside the window. But I don't want to freeze, you know, in fucking February in Connecticut. Well, you don't have to open the window, do you? <laughs> uh, otherwise, she won't. If, if the window's not open, she won't pay attention to it. Or she'll demand that I open the window, like... <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the Mushroom Kingdom economy for a second, can we? Oh, I... Mario I... has, like, a, a plumber's doctorate, but he's also a doctor, and the coins don't even do anything. Uh, I am basically Mario leaving you guys to manage Mario's never used the coin chat. to buy anything. I'm basically leaving chat up to you guys today because I have to actually focus on this shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's see. Where have we been? Like, I don't get the Mushroom Kingdom economy. Well, I guess they spend all their coins backstabbing each other when they play Mario Party. Makes sense. Yeah, that's probably where it all goes. Instead of, like, buying food or services from people, it just all goes into Mario Party. Howard just goes right into Wario's coffers. That dude is greedy. You know what? Yeah, that's probably it. It just kind of all flows into Wario's castles. That's how they maintain their artificial scarcity. Even though there's, <laughs> even though there's like, a, a million of the things. God, there needs to be a new Wario game. We, we haven't had a WarioWare in quite some time. I imagine You're it's only it's... a matter of, you know, months before we see one on the Switch. Yeah, yeah. like the WarioWare series is kind of what they trot out every time they need, like, a proof of concept. No, wait. Yeah. Our, our Wiggle game really works. This We can use this I for need, other games. I need a double blue so fucking badly, and I just wouldn't get one. <laughs> it never happened. To be fair, though, it seems like that series is kind of converging with Rhythm Heaven now that that's a thing that actually sells stateside. Yeah, it, it is. It took them long enough to bring it stateside. Lo In I fact, I'm pretty so sure the um, Rhythm Heaven team came up with the latest WarioWare game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The uh, art I... styles are identical at this point. Yeah. Um, quite, like, I think quite at a certain team. point, the Rhythm Heaven team just kind of inherited the WarioWare series. Well, Which, you know, could have gone to a way worse hand. Kotakuchi has always um, been the artist for both. Really? Yeah. His Twitter is phenomenal. He posts so much freaking fan art. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. I don't follow nearly enough people on Twitter, and when I do, it's the wrong people. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, Twitter's been kind of uh, up and down lately. Yeah. I know See, you've been conspicuously like... absent, and I don't blame you a bit. All right, I, that I, one. I got it. I got it down to a science, at least on Tumblr, with my feed, like who to follow and stuff. So I, I just get this never-ending stream of like old artwork from like the heyday of Capcom and Konami and stuff like that, and like capybaras and people who <laughs> Photoshop pictures of guitar legends playing slugs instead of guitars. That's a really good one. <laughs> like I don't get any politics. And, I don't like, get any teenagers starting birds. shit. Just the good yeah. stuff. Like videos of parrots. Yeah. Go pick up corn. <laughs> we love parrots here. We're pro parrot. Very pro parrot. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get this one from the bottom. What? <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you had I one knew chance. you were gonna. Oh, you got another chance. Second wind. There you go. Wait a minute, what? Does the game feel sorry for you? What do you mean? There was like six red... There was like six double reds in a row. Well, I mean, that could conditionally also fuck you over royally. Yeah, yeah, yeah I suppose that's true. Oh, 
Ooh, we got some real game theory from Full Hazard here. Yeah. Alternate theory, Mario is loaded, and the games themselves are basically elaborate games that millionaire Dr. Mario plays on weekends. Give me a fucking <laughs> all the Koopas, move. All the Koopas are actors, that's why everyone is still friendly enough to play tennis. <laughs> well, that's why I like the Paper Mario games, is because, like, they introduced the idea of, you know, hey, there are, there are some Goombas and Koopas that aren't, you know, evil assholes. Like, I imagine the Goombas just being disenfranchised, mostly. Hashtag not all Koopas. Yeah. <laughs> Tired of living under a monarchy where the princess doesn't do anything except, like, make cake. For Italians. Yeah. <laughs> she never made a cake for Bowser. Poor Bowser. He just has to go be a good dad to his kids. Actually, no, I take that back. She did make a cake for Bowser once. Scandalous. Yeah. If you beat Mario's inside story, like, Bowser gets all fucked up and he's in his... He's in bed in his castle all bandaged up and, like... Uh, somebody brings him a package and it was like a cake. That's what I like about Mario. It's they they're basically all on speaking terms no matter what happens. <laughs> for now. For now, yeah. Waiting for that like, gritty they'll, reboot. They'll be in like they'll be in like a, a save the world from destruction situation and then they like go play go karts. Well, I mean, that was like to me the revolutionary thing about Mario RPG. It was like, hey, Bowser's like your friend in this one. Yeah, you can have Bowser in your party, plus Peach, and she actually does things. She Oops, sorry. We didn't real... mean to do that. <laughs> she can be real fucking powerful <laughs> in that. Yeah. They need more of that. Everything that she was in past that was just... Like a placeholder character thing where everyone else could do it, too. Or, or you get a game like Super Princess Peach where... Because girls have to play yeah. emotion... Like... A girl has to be playing with her emotions in this game. What? Yeah, mood swings was her power. That was the dumbest fucking idea. Big deal, I can do that. <laughs> to be frank, I thought Bowser's inside story was going to be the thing where he got to star in something, but I guess not! I mean, technically he's the star, because half the game takes place inside him, and then the other half takes place outside of him. I know, but that's like saying Bill Murray was the star of Osmosis Jones. It doesn't really work. <laughs> well, wait, he wasn't the star anyway. Like, the kid was the star, if that's the logic we're using. The kid? No, they were inside of Are we Murray. talking about the same thing anymore? Wasn't, uh... Who was Bill Murray in Osmosis Jones? He was, uh... He was the guy who got sick. I thought the entire movie took place inside some kid. No, no, no. I think that was like the cartoon where for some reason it, all of the, the main characters get sneezed or shat out of Bill Murray and into some child. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. I'm really glad they didn't really explain it. Or if they did, it might have been in a forgotten episode. <laughs> 